I very much uh, respect uh, your competence as social stabilizers and uh, for accounting of our resources. On the news tonight, President Buhari receives icon president. Contemporary security challenges of the 21st century submit only to knowledge-based and specialized efforts. Develop strategies to tackle the nation's evolving insecurity and achieve challenges course participants. Well, the issue of wash in general is very, very sensitive and very important to the world community at large. Federal government gets recognition for efforts at water sanitation and hygiene. Carrying out uh, microscopic or whatever test that is required. Also tonight, don't sell, don't consume. Experts warn residents following the death of Tati Cartels under mysterious circumstances in local Japan. Hello and a warm welcome to NTA Network News. I am Jumma Yusuf. We are live in Abuja. Michael Olale is in our Lagos studio and Nana Aisha Mamudu is in our Sokoto studio. Thanks so much for joining us. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website nta.ng slash live and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Now let's get the news. President Muhammadu Buhari says professionals in various fields, especially accounting, provide the strength and framework for thriving economies, promising that his administration will continue to engage them in the onerous tasks of nation building. This was while receiving audience, the president and members of the governing council of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICON. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the details. The ICANN delegation was in the State House to reassure President Muhammad Buhari of the unflinching commitment of the Institute's 55,000 members to national development through their professional expertise. The president of the Institute, Comfort Olu Eitayo, described as delightful that the January to December budget cycle has been restored and the Finance Act is now a regular part of the nation's budget process towards making the Appropriations Act realizable in line with international best practices. The Institute is not relenting in its contributions to the national desire for a prosperous economy. As chartered accountants, we acknowledge our role in combating terrorism by the application of the principle of forensic accounting and follow the money to fish out the perpetrators of these illegal activities. We would continue to avail the country of our technical competencies in forensic audit, working with other security agencies to expose these enemies of progress. We also recognize your efforts to encourage the domestication of global policies in our local environment in a manner that coheres with our local context and adapts these policies to suit our unique socio-economic situation. President Muhammad Buhari, who formally congratulated Mrs. Ayitayo on her election as the 57th president of ICANN, noted with delight the contributions of the Institute in ensuring probity, accountability, and transparency in the management of the nation's economic resources. He, however, called for more diligence and professionalism in discharging their responsibilities in the best interests of the country. I know the accountants are not very popular in most of our institutions because nobody wants to account for what he is doing. <laughs> but uh, I very much uh, respect uh, your competence as social stabilizers and uh, uh, for accounting of our resources. He said having served as military head of state and returned to politics to serve as president enabled him to know a lot about the system of accountability in the country and the mess to be cleaned up. Majority of Nigerians, the president emphasized, do not want to give proper account of their stewardship in positions of responsibility given to them in trust, which he however said is not possible. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, 
NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has called for a better coordination in policy formulation for poverty reduction and sustainable development in the country. Professor Oshibajo made the call during the closing ceremony of the 21st edition of the Joint Planning Board and National Council on Development Planning meeting, which held in Abakeleke, the Eboy State Capital. Chika Okori reports that the Vice President used the opportunity of the visit to inaugurate some landmark projects in the state. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Ushibajo, who was earlier received at the Ebon State International Airport by a Momot crowd, proceeded to the State Executive Council Chamber venue of the conference. Professor Ushibajo said, in spite of various social investment programs aimed at addressing poverty by the present administration, the national economic discourse remains paramount, especially at this critical time. The world continues to face the onslaught of COVID-19 pandemic and war between Russia and Ukraine. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate all stakeholders for the stellar work that has been done in articulating our National Development Plan 2021 to 2025. The strategic objectives of the National Development Plan include establishing a strong foundation for a diversified economy, investing in critical infrastructure, enabling human capital development, and improving governance and strengthening security. You will agree with me that the only solution to our numerous challenges are to strengthen our institutions over and above personalities and deliver good governance to our people. In his remarks, the state governor, Chief David Umahe, who expressed faith in the unity of the country, called for patriotism among Nigerians and a legislation to make VAT collection an exclusive right of the federal government. I have faith in this country, I have faith in our leaders. And I commend Mr. President and the Vice President. You know, I feel so sad where there is a debate about VAT. All over the nation of this world, VAT is collected by the central government. And I don't know why everything in this country is politicized. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Ushibajo, later commissioned several landmark projects executed by Governor David Omahe, such as the new government house chapel and kilometers of wood constructed using the red label in Abakaliki, Chika Ukore, NTA News. Let's bring you up to speed with other news. Recruitment into the civil service must be based strictly on merit to ensure the service have the best hands at entry level. This is one of the observations of the committee set up by the head of civil service of the Federation for Lashide Yemi Essen for the design of appropriate capacity building programs for directorate level officers in the federal civil service. Hamman Jopani reports on the findings of the committee. The 16-man committee, which was set up in August 2021, came up with 29 findings and 41 recommendations with proposed strategies and actions plan for implementation. The committee observed that the absence of a comprehensive civil service-wide policy on capacity building has left the civil service without a statutory framework for the training of officers and the recruitment processes in the public service has been faulty. And because of the urgent need to kickstart this reform initiative, this committee has gone, be, uh, gone further to prepare strategies and action plans for the implementation of some of our recommendations. We did this believing that a number of the recommendations can be considered as low hanging fruits that should be implemented immediately. It on record that the capacity of the directorate. The head of the civil service of the Federation commended the committee for coming up with all the findings and that already some of the issues raised have been addressed with relevant MDAs. The vision is that we start the trainings this year so that 2023 promotions will be based on this training that we would have conducted. That is the vision and I pray that God will help us to achieve that vision. It is believed that if the directorate level is strengthened, it will transform the entire workforce as it is the coaching and mentorship level of the subordinate officers. Hamman Jabani, NTA News.
Now, in the wake of industrial unrest in some electricity distribution firms, federal government is engaging electricity workers to ensure harmony in the power sector. Joshua Ojito reports that the Minister of State for Power, Gordi J.D. Agba, is leading interventions. Recent unrest by electricity workers due to non-payment of staff entitlements led to blackouts in franchise areas, including the nation's capital, Abuja. Though federal government intervened and resolved the impasse, the conversation here with players in the industry is to sustain industrial harmony so as to serve electricity consumers better. I also hope and pray that the union will work along with governments, as they have always done, to improve the situation of things in the industry. Let us have light by working together and working hard, hard enough to keep this thing going so our economy can improve. Without electricity, this economy cannot move forward. And so it is expected that sitting where you sit in the seat of leadership, that you will chart the path that every other sector will follow to make Nigeria a great nation. The Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment had always advised, guided and mediated. The Honorable Minister of State Power had always kept me close to know where the Minister of Power would intervene, as usual. While federal government assures electricity workers of favorable working condition, it is expected that their commitment to duty will translate to improve power supply. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Meanwhile, sustaining and expanding the energy mix policy of the federal government, which targets 30% renewable energy sources by the year 2030, key players in the electricity industry say will address the recent challenge of power outages nationwide. Joshua Ajito reports that industry players say, in addition to solar home systems, more investment in wind turbines and nuclear energy will bridge energy gap in the country while commending the prompt intervention of the federal government to restore supply nationwide. The power engineers advocate for more coordinated approach in the yearly turnaround maintenance of generating plants so as to avoid a repeat of the recent experience that threw the country into darkness. Expansion and maintenance plan, planning, uh, planning coordination center for power generation plants and gas suppliers nationwide. This will ensure that a minimum level of power is available on the grid at all times. In accordance with the grid code, the system operator under the supervision of the regulator should be mandated to coordinate GENCOS and the TCN expansion and maintenance program to ensure that at all times during the year, there's a minimum of about 6,000 megawatts in the grid, at least for now. That should be the planning. The group managing director of the, NM, of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company, NMPC, Mele Kari, has informed the House of Reps Committee on Petroleum Upstream on the level of crude oil theft and vandalism and how such acts of crime are impacting the sector. Mele Kari explained that measures have been put in place to improve production output and increase revenue. The GMD suggests setting up of special courts to prosecute the culprits behind these acts of economic sabotage. What we are seeing today, we have not seen it in the last 20 to 25 years in terms of production numbers. Within a distance of less than 20 kilometers, we remove 85 insertions within three weeks. More revelations have come beyond what we imagined. And we don't want a preempt what we are looking for. Let's move away from disasters foretold to an era of disasters prevented. Now, crude oil theft is said to have grossly affected daily production output, which necessitated adjustment to the fiscal framework by the federal government. Let's talk judiciary matters. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has quashed eight out of the 15 count charge being faced by the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra in Namdekanu. The presiding judge, Justice Binta Inyako, gave the order in a ruling on the preliminary objection of Inamdekanu on his trial. Daily Atumbi reports. 
Ahmad Dekanu, who was facing 15 counts charge through his counsel, Mike Ezeokume, SAN, raised preliminary objection on all the 15 counts preferred against him, having pleaded not guilty. The counts bordered on alleged acts of treasonable felony and terrorism. The presiding judge, Justice Binta Nyako, struck out eight out of the 15 counts. The affected counts are 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 14 showed some allegations which the defendant has to answer. After the ruling, the bail application of Unam Dikano was argued. Prosecution counsel Shwaibu Labaran vehemently opposed the bail application, arguing that the defendant had earlier jumped bail. Defense counsel pleaded with the court to grant bail to the defendant in the interest of fair airing for him to stand his trial. All the counts relating to terrorism are really sustained by the court and they make heavy weather on the issue of rendition and the court bluntly said that rendition in this situation is allowed. If eight counts went, the remaining seven, it's a necessary corollary, we go. But when we look at those seven counts, whether they even hold any water at all in law. Outside the courtroom, a group called One Nigeria Stage, a peaceful rally, canvassing speedy trial of the matter. We have every confidence on the judiciary and we are also in support of the judiciary as always and uh, we are all out here today as always to redeem our pledge to our country. And Going by order four of the new Federal High Court practice directions on trial of terrorism cases 2022, coverage of terrorism proceedings is prohibited save for the discretion of the court. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. You can follow this news broadcast live on all our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. The Zenith Better Life promo is back, and it's bigger and better. You could be one of 20 lucky customers to win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from now till January 31st, 2023. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account and maintain a minimum balance of 5,000 Naira. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Dear friend, how are you? Hmm, I can smell the goodness of Easter around you. But wait a minute, do you know you can enjoy Easter in luxurious comfort like never before? Because this Easter, Bad Maids Furniture invites you to discover new levels of comfort with furniture that brings life to your home. Seriously, now is your last chance to have a memorable Easter and beyond. From 21st March to 20th April 2022, get furniture you love at unbelievable low prices with free gifts in our showrooms. Hurry now before others choose the finest units you want. When crimes are tough, we know that as a mother, one thing you should never compromise on is your family's oral health because they deserve the best. Oral V, all around protection. It's great value. It protects your mouth from harmful bacteria and also protects you against tooth holes and gum problems which can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your family's teeth and gives them all around protection. So remember Remember, protect their future. Oral-B for healthier, stronger teeth in just one week. For those wondering if the new Swept Zobo tastes as good as they say it does, experience tells us. Try it. Find out for yourself. Introduce a new Swept Zobo, made with over 200 years of experience. She thinks she feels well, despite my efforts to practice good hygiene. Mom says wash your hands to keep the germs away. Washing hands is good, but surfaces can also have germs, and you shouldn't use just anything for cleaning them. Use Jig. Jig's formula has been scientifically proven to stay active for longer, giving you whitening and germ kill protection on a variety of surfaces. Disinfect to protect, just Jig it. Endorsed by National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives. Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, VONS, cordially invite general public to the 16th Annual Ramadan Lecture.
Topic, social media, effect on morality. Guest speakers, Professor Ishak Olariwaju Oloyedi, Registrar, Joint Admission Matriculation Board, and Professor Ismail Shehu, Department of Political Science, ABU Zaria. Under the chairmanship of architect Muhammad Namadi Sambu, GCON, former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Special guest of honor, Right Honorable Oladimeji Bankoli, former speaker, House of Representatives. Royal Father of the Day, His Highness Ambassador Ahmed Nu Bamali, Emir of Zazo. Chief Host, His Excellency Marlon Nasser Ahmed El Rufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Hosts, Marlon Yakub Ibn Muhammad, Director General NTA. Dr. Mansur Liman, Director General FRCN, and Osita Okechuku, Director General Voice of Nigeria. Date, Saturday, 9th April 2022. Venue, Lumana Multipurpose Center, River Close, of Jabi Road East, Kaduna. Time, 9 a.m., inshallah. Announcer, Organizing Committee. Are you aware that your perfect family may be under threat by germs? Germs can cause infectious disease. These infectious diseases are amongst the biggest killers of adults and children. Illness causing germs are everywhere. In unclean bathing water, on your clothes, dirty surfaces, on cuts and wounds. To protect your family from germs, use the power of Dettol's one cap full. In your bathing water, in your laundry, for surface cleaning, for first aid, and to protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be Dettol sure. <laughs> Thanks for rejoining us. Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi says the federal government is committed to ensuring an efficient transport system in the country for economic and social development. The minister stated this in Abuya Kuta at the unveiling of the Ogun State Mass Transit Bus Scheme in Ogun State. Lekong Angbode reports. And the Ogun State government for embarking on huge transport infrastructure investment in the state. The Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi says with Ogun State Mass Transit Bus Scheme now in place, transportation has been strengthened in the state to provide vital links between centers of production and markets, thereby making life more comfortable for the people. The fact that you are a gateway has given you the benefit of having different and several rail uh, lines that goes to different areas. So your people will be enjoying the construction of railway, and I hope, and it may happen, that most industries, because of the land you have, will move down this way because of the fact that you have railways trans transversing your area within your state. Ogo State Governor Dapo Aberu says efficient transport system remains the only way to promote competitiveness, market accessibility, and economic growth. We are deeply committed to the transformation of this great state. Goodwill messages from former President Olusegun Obasanjo and other key stakeholders centered on the effective use and maintenance of the scheme for flow of goods and human movement across the state. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmode, NTA News. So, talking infrastructure, restruct, restructuring and upgrade of Zaria Funtua Road is progressing steadily, and motorists plying the road have been thankful to the federal government for according. The project desired attention. Tina Toro reports that the road which suffered neglect in the past is now becoming motorable. Zaria Funtua has been a strategic link between Kaduna and the northwest states of Katsina, Sokoto, Kebi and Zampara. It is one of the critical infrastructure moving the economy of various communities around that corridor. However, the road suffered serious neglect in the past, but the administration of President Buhari is bringing it back to life. The rehabilitation and upgrade of the 70-kilometer Zaria Funtua Road, awarded at the cost of more than 10 billion naira by the federal government. Construction work is going on steadily, with contractors handling the project, mobilizing to meet deadline. Motorists plying the road express pleasure with the level of rehabilitation work. Very soon the rains will step in, and at that time it slows down the work. But hopefully, 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 <laughs> we are looking at this maybe before the end of this year or early next year. I to reduce especially the road accidents that we normally have when the road was uh, tattered. 
But with this new development, God's willing, lives will be saved. Before now, to move from flyover to TT Hospital, you almost spend uh, two hours or so because of the bad road. But with, the, with what is happening now, in less than 15, 20 minutes, one can move from um, flyover to TT Hospital. And it makes them um, work easy. Uh, the, the work is perfect. The company handling the activities they are trying. The hope among road users is that contractors should speed up the work and deliver on time without compromising quality. In Zaria, Tina Turu, NTA News. The Federal Road Safety Corps has just graduated 550 participants of the Marshall Inspector's Basic Course at the Nigeria Army Training Center, Kontogora, Niger State. Corps Marshall Federal Road Safety Corps Boboye Oyeyemi is optimistic that with the knowledge and skills acquired throughout the training will enable the officers bring in new ideas in the course of carrying out their duties. Oyeyemi Ajayi has details. In pursuit of goals set as part of planned structural modifications aimed at improving service delivery capacity, these 550 graduating Marshall inspectors were selected out of numerous applicants. It is expected that these officers will be adding value to the core. The core Marshall, Baboye Oyeyemi, represented by Depot Marshall Training, Sheo Zaki, urged the officers to continually improve on the knowledge and exposure gathered. The reports I received from the commandants on their training were quite impressive on these well bred men. I wish to congratulate the graduating inspectors and encourage you all to contribute to the success of your call towards making our highway safe. The new officers have been posted to their different formations with the hope of having a smooth scale up through the ranks. In Abuja, Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. Governor Bala Mohammed of Bauchi State says Nigeria can overcome its security challenges if state governments and Nigerians support the federal government in that direction. He was speaking while distributing cars to local government chairmen and district heads in Bauchi. Mahmoud Mohammed reports. The distribution of these vehicles to our parents, the beneficiaries the of these cars are 20 local government chairmen and six zonal LGS inspectorate units. Another set of beneficiaries are 38 district heads. And this because majority of our people live in the rural areas, in the districts, in the Emirates. Very few of us live, are living in Bauchi city. The call on the traditional institution to be more vigilant on happenings in their domains. Governor Bola Mohammed says Nigeria will overcome all security threats if crimes are tackled at the community level. We are further the president commander in chief because he really wants to do it, but he is not being supported. I, as a governor, head of a subnational administration, I'm ready to work with the federal government to make sure we secure our state and our country. He also assures of ensuring that Bochi State will continue to be amongst the peaceful states in Nigeria. In Bochi, Mahmoud Muhammad, NTA News. Socio-economic activities are gradually picking up again at the Akanu Ibiam International Airport, Enugu, with the ongoing rehabilitation at the airport. Comfort IM captured the present state of the new terminal building and now reports. The Akanu Ibiam International Airport, Enugu, which serves as a gateway to the southeast of the country, was officially reopened in August 30, 2020, after shutdown in 2019 for rehabilitation. The runway over the years was an eyesore which led to the rehabilitation. A perimeter fence was also constructed. I witnessed a lot of improvement, um, which really gave me the hope that um, the eastern part of Nigeria is not being abandoned. Everything has changed, not like before. Today, a new aviation medical block is built awaiting inauguration, while construction of an administrative block is yet to be completed. We are great. Two flights a day, unlike normal. So the airport is close. But before the airport remains alive and active till 10 o'clock. Now the traditional 
uh, aspect. It's improving. Inflation in the country and security situation, passengers believe, have really affected the volume of business in the area, a situation that has also affected flight schedule. In Enugu Comfort, I am NT News. The military is taxing participants of the Army World College Course 6 2022 to develop strategies to tackle the evolving asymmetric ch security challenges in the country. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Faruk Yahya, stressed this at the War College Abuja. To hereby inaugurate. It is the beginning of training at the Nigerian Army War College for these mid-senior level officers, mostly from Nigeria and five from allied countries. For about nine months, the officers will be taken through several aspects of modern warfare. The current security environment in the country gives added impetus for the need to train operational level leaders to enhance their effectiveness in meeting the ends of military strategic objectives for Nigeria. The increasing asymmetrical nature of modern warfare poses a knot for the participants to crack. The outcome will form part of a larger strategy the Army seeks to deploy in tackling the security challenges in the country. And the current threats are mostly asymmetric and thus do not have ready-made conventional approaches to tackle them. You must therefore learn to think out of the box, not forgetting that contemporary security challenges of the 21st century submit only to knowledge-based and specialized efforts. The time has come for us to address recruitment, education, training, and promotion so that they are consistent with the intellectual requirement for the future joint force. The security challenges in the country continues to evolve and the traditional method of tackling them are becoming obsolete. The Army War College Nigeria, established in 2017, is focused at producing trained operational leaders for the Nigerian Army. From the Nigerian Army War College in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Michael is standing by in our Lagos studios for more on network news. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jumai. Securing the Gulf of Guinea against all forms of external attacks and piracy is crucial owing to the global importance of the maritime routes to Ecuador's countries. The chief of the naval staff, Howard Gambo, while noting strategies designed by the personnel to secure the maritime corridor, said the Nigerian Navy is strengthening collaboration with the European Union to further secure the maritime space. Abola de Salami reports. Maritime insecurity has long been one of the most persistent and intractable threats to maritime communities and economic prosperity in West Africa. Importantly, concerted efforts in form of synergy to address the menace was reached in conjunction with the economic community of Central African states to formulate the Yaoundé Code of Conduct as a foundation for broad-based regional maritime security along the entire Gulf of Guinea. Efforts to continue to secure the maritime space, especially the Gulf of Guinea, is crucial to the regional navies and international players. In extending the collaboration beyond the continent of Africa, at a time the nation is committed to the sustainable development of our blue economy, the Nigerian Navy is strengthening relationship with the European Union on maritime security. The European Union share a mutual interest with Nigeria. The freedom of navigation along the coast of the Gulf of Guinea is our freedom of navigation as well. While the Nigerian Navy is deploying all in its arsenal to rid the maritime space of piracy, armed robbery at sea, as well as kidnapping of seafarers, synergy with other Gulf of Guinea navies will be sustained to comb the coastal area of illegalities. Working together is a synchronon in the zeal to defend the seas by enhanced maritime security and safety needed to promote international trade. Meanwhile, in the maritime simulation exercise, officers from the Spanish and Italian Navy participated in a research and rescue operation of a vessel that was hijacked by pirates. 
The willingness of the Nigerian Navy to always collaborate with international partners in efforts to curb maritime crimes in the Gulf of Guinea was re-emphasized in Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTN News. It will no longer be business as usual for recalcitrant traders who are in the habit of undermining extant laws guiding import and export of goods in the country. As the Papa Area Command of the Nigeria Customs Service is reinvigorated to clamp down on smuggling activities within the port, the area controller Yusuf Malanta sounded the note of warning while briefing the media on the command's activities in the fourth quarter of 2022. Kenya DBC has details. Barely four months into the year, the Nigeria Customs Service, the Papa Command, as in no small measure, surpassed the revenue generated between the month of January to March 2021 by 65.7% when compared to 2022. This feast was made possible through officers' dedication and leveraging on information technology. The Papa Command will always ready to assist in facilitating legitimate trade and ensuring that all forms of smuggling activities through false declaration on import stock export trade done in defiance to the extant trade guidelines will be detected through our layers of control mechanism. In its anti-smuggling campaign, goods that fall under the probation list were seized, totaling 46 items with a duty paid value of close to 1.2 billion naira. The non-inspection uh, inspection regime is targeted in increasing volume of cargo inspection, saving cost and time of clearing, storing reliable data and images for reference purposes, and reduce human contact in the examination of containerized cargo leading to delay in the clearance time. Not resting on its incident, the command says its track record would only propel officers and men of the command to up its antics in discharging their responsibility. In Lagos, Kengdi, LBC, NT News. Remember that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now, and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. Time, time for some messages. The news continues shortly. Please stay. Oh, when I see this collab, I'm wearing a suit there. No, stop. <laughs> yeah, give me small new number now. Uh, romance without finance now, annoyance. Maybe give me bullet. Uh, yeah, give me the number. Oh, yeah, just the number down. 0805. Uh -huh. huh? Where the complete number? It's always so hot, like the blessing like, I go need juice, so just like juicy. Hey, oh, yeah, give me last numbers. My five password. Four and I give you. <laughs> oh, yeah, seven, six, five, zero. Uh -huh. yeah. What's you? What's you? It's funny, hello, all right? Ooh, what's you? <laughs> Guys, the first collab was not destroying you. Give me that. Submit your first. Choose a social data bundle that suits your style. Dial star triple seven hash glow unlimited. <laughs> Find the strength I need every time that I look into your eyes. It's true, I know they worry, God, I know that you did by my side. It's true, now when the night comes, you will be in your arms and you stay. I'll never let you go, my feet, baby. No matter what I do, you love me unconditionally. So I love you every day, no matter what day I show you. You show me love. You show me, you show me, you show me love. Every moment you do, all your desire just to take care of me. Even when I'm at my worst, you see that you see the best in me. Whenever I go, you know that you always answer. Oh. 
Welcome back. Efforts of the federal government towards putting an end to open defecation and making every Nigerian have access to water, sanitation and hygiene by 2025 is receiving the recognition of Water Aid, an international non-governmental organization. Oluche Adeyegu completes the report. For a government at the highest level to, to understand the worst challenges in the country and declare a state of emergency is the indication of the highest level of political will and commitment to solve the problems. That's the start of the journey. What's ahead, an international organization that focuses on the wash sector and operating in 34 countries around the world has been observing activities and programs of Nigeria's water, sanitation and hygiene. What's ahead has presented an award to the minister, Suleiman Adamu, in recognition of his efforts. They wanted to know from different countries who was contributing to the work of Water Aid to addressing the worst challenges across the world. So we did a profile on the Honorable Minister, and it was clear that he will be one of the biggest winners for that. So we are very happy to be here today to celebrate with him and to give him his award. The award is serves as an advocacy tool uh, for people, uh, all the stakeholders, to appreciate that uh, uh, the issue of sanitation and hygiene, or the issue of wash in general, is very very sensitive and very important to the world community at large. For the leadership of the Ministry of Water Resources, the award has come with its own license to re-engineer the country's unwavering commitment to achieving long-lasting results in the wash sector. In Abuja, Olusheye Adiago, in News. To agriculture now, the policies, programs and investment in the agricultural sector of the economy in the last seven years have averted major food crisis and scarcity in the country. This is coming as the global food prices hit world record. According to the figures of the United Nations, Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohamed while briefing newsmen at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting said Nigeria is on the right track. Musa Baba Ali reports. The world is today facing uncertainty in the supply of food as a result of scarcity and increase in the prices of food items. It's a global phenomenon. And I challenge anybody, go and Google today, what was the price of you know, gasoline, diesel, table food in 2016 in China, in South Africa, what it is today, what it is today. And look at you know, also the, 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 the situation in Nigeria. Investigation revealed that Nigeria would have been facing a serious food crisis if not for the policy of let's eat what we produce and produce what we eat. In 2015, the administration identified the Anchor Borrowers Program as an essential policy instrument for achieving economic diversification. 
through agriculture. This has therefore pushed off food production by about 80% across the country. Over 4.8 million farmers in Nigeria today benefit from the Anchor Growers Program, in, not just in rice, cassava, palm oil, you know, livestock and the like. Nigeria today, according to World Food Records, remains the largest producer of grains in Africa and the major supplier to West Africa. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. In the build-up to the 2023 general elections, conversations are getting louder for a peaceful society in order to achieve successful elections next year. Aliu Tijani reports that Nasara State Governor Abdullahi Saleh is championing this cause with advocacy for peaceful and harmonious coexistence amongst ethnic groups in the state. Nasarawa is heterogeneous with diverse ethnic groups. Three years into the administration, ethnic groups in the state are celebrating the relative peace in the state. Igong ethnic group from the southern zone of the state are on solidarity visit to the governor. You have completed an ongoing project by the past administrations. You have completed the banquet hall where we are seated. This is the way to go. The of the nation of the government has resolved that by 2023, there, there will be no any Governor Abdullahi Sule emphasized that achievement recorded in the last three years of his administration can be sustained if ethnic groups in the state coexist peacefully. Because without your support, without your cooperation, without your willingness to work together as the people of the Sahara state, we will not be able to have the peace that we are having today. Although Governor Abdullah is lazy here to declare his intention to seek re-election next year, the state government says peace is paramount to a successful election in 2023. In Lafia, Aliu Tijani, NTA News. President Mahmoud Buhari has assented to two bills recently passed by the National Assembly, as these are the Animal Diseases Control Act 2022, Cap A17. Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 and enact the Animal Disease Control Act for the purpose of prevention, detection, control and eradication of infectious and contagious transboundary and zoonotic animal disease. And the Nigerian Police Academy Establishment Act 2021. The Act establishes and provides legal framework for the Nigeria Police Academy Woodil Kano State as a degree awarding institution to provide academic and professional training. The Academy will be headed by a commandant not below the rank of Assistant Inspector General of Police and shall be appointed by the Police Service Commission on the recommendation of the Inspector General of Police as stipulated in Section 8 of the Act. Omar Ibrahim El Yaqub, Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, House of Representatives, was at the State House for the signings of the bills. A herd of cows have been struck by a strange ailment with not less than 10 seriously affected. However, quick intervention of officials from the Lokoja local government, Kogi State Ministry of Environment Agriculture has helped to avert possible food poisoning as those that were slaughtered and conveyed for sale to unsuspecting members of the public have been mopped up and destroyed. Solomon Ayadehe has the report. An eyewitness account who spoke off camera revealed to NTA News crew that the cows, while returning from grazing at about 6 Wednesday evening, got to Zonate area, Lokoja, and began to exhibit signs of sickness as a result of what many believe is the consumption of agrochemicals. The chairman called that I had a call from Zone 8 area that uh, cows numbering uh, over 30 were found dead. And uh, they were scared not even because of the 
because they never even thought anybody would come and pick such cow and take to market. The effort will be geared towards carrying out uh, microscopic or whatever test that is required to make sure that uh, poison or uh, contaminated meat is not sold to the public. While two of the infected cows were said to have been intercepted around Zone 8 Junction in the early hours of the day, some carcass were discovered and retrieved at a cold room with others recovered at Lokongoma Market. We have done enough finding at the cool room. We discovered that it is highly dosed with organophosphate, which is detrimental to human beings. And as such, we are condemning it so that it will not be left for them to go and be sold for human consumption. The recovered dead cows have since been buried in Lokoja, Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. We'll pause for some messages now. The news continues shortly. Do stay. She's saying she feels unwell, despite my efforts to practice good hygiene. Mom says wash your hands to keep the germs away. Washing hands is good, but surfaces can also have germs, and you shouldn't use just anything for cleaning them. Use Jig. Jig's formula has been scientifically proven to stay active for longer, giving you whitening and germ kill protection on a variety of surfaces. Disinfect to protect, just jig it. Endorsed by National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. You're welcome back. Sports update is next. The Nigeria Basketball Federation is repositioning its grassroots development approach by supporting talent hands clinics while intensifying drive towards attracting corporate sponsorship to lessen the burden of government funding. This was evident at the Sam Ogoche Bullet Basketball Talent Camp in Abuja, where over 300 junior players split into three groups were taken through tactical sessions as they look forward to becoming future stars. And we we're going to encourage them because without education, you not you can't go anywhere. A programs like this showcases kids from all walks of life, you know what I'm saying? Winners continue to emerge at the first Japanese Ambassadors Karate Championship in the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, as Onyeme Blessing of Team Delta won the minus 68 kilogram female category and Eddak Ekpenyo, representing Team Cross River, reigned supreme in the minus 50 kg. With the collaboration of the embassy, I'm quite sure that uh, the athlete will, uh, will be spoiled to glory. On day soon, a Nigeria Karate athlete can participate in the next Olympic Games. The two-day championship, which ends Saturday, has karatekas from 17 states competing in both kata and kumite events as the bid to improve their ranking points. In the meantime, Inspector General of Police Usman Al-Kali Baba has reassured the commitment of the force towards recruiting and training gifted sportsmen for Nigeria's success. The IGP disclosed this in Abuja while receiving the all-conquering Nigeria police team to the 2022 One Service One Medal Awesome Games, where they won 80 gold, 26 silver and 35 bronze medals. <laughs> We did well, but this year, yes. The reception coincides with the commemoration of IGP's one year in office. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde, NTA News.
President Mohamedou Buhari commiserates with former President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan on the demise of his two personal staff in a road accident. President Buhari joined fellow countrymen in praying for the repose of the soul of the deceased while expressing gratitude to Almighty God for having President Jonathan escape unhurt from the accident, urging him not to be distracted from his frequent local and international travels, which are linked to peace building at home and abroad. The Nigeria Meteorological Agency has predicted a possible rise in temperature across most northern cities in Nigeria. A statement issued by the SGC this Friday indicates that most parts of the northern state and parts of Niger and Kwara in the central states are expected to experience temperatures greater than 40 degrees Celsius. The statement added, few places in the south, including parts of Oyo, Ogun, Oshun and Ekiti are expected to record temperatures between 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. As a result, the statement warned against occurrences of heat-related illness such as stroke, sunstroke, muscle cramp and fatigue. These are also, there are also chances of experiencing high thermal discomfort in parts of Kebbi, Dutsi, Bochi and Jalingo. And that's the news this evening. But before we go, don't forget to join us in the fight against rip and rapists to be a star. I am Jumai Yasuf. <laughs>